This presentation is about Nancy Ward, a Cherokee beloved woman. But before I talk about her, I thought I'd give you a little orientation to the Cherokee. Where did they come from? Some folks say they migrated from the south. Some folks said they came from an islands. Other folks say they were created right here. Well, this is the cave. Nani Waya Cave, where the Choctaw believe they came from. Muscogee Creek, Cherokee, all came from here, according to some of their old stories. Quite a few tribes have people coming up from out of the ground and being uh, put where they are now. Well, the Cherokees were first, quote unquote, discovered by Europeans in the 1540s by DeSoto. This is a map where he came through uh, the southern part, the southeastern part of the United States. And this is what the Cherokees may have looked like back then. This is what the kind of dwellings they might have had looked like back around the 1500s. Next to the townhouse, Now this is Etowa, which is located in Georgia. Although it's pronounced Etowa. It's inside the uh, Cherokee Eastern Band uh, Museum in Cherokee, North Carolina. And this itself is Edowa Mounds. It's in Georgia, in the northern part of Georgia. There are several mounds out here, very tall ones. You can see here on this uh, shot where how long the stairs are to get up there. And actually, it gets a little winded out there if you're not in good shape. And this is the view from up on top. You can see the people on the stairs over there give you an idea of how big it uh, is. Very large, large site. And this is what a typical Cherokee-type village may have looked at, liked back then. Now, the Cherokee claims you can see here covered many, many states, the southern end of the Appalachia. Slowly but surely, it faded away as interactions with the uh, governments took place. Unfortunately for the Cherokees, they uh, supported the British uh, during the Revolutionary War, and that uh, led to a lot of land lo uh, losses. Now, the kind of structures they lived in are called waddle and daw back in the old days, and you see some folks here doing a demonstration. What you'd have is several posts around the ground, and then you'd weave canes or reeds in between the parts, and then you'd cover that up with uh, mud, and that was used in several spots around the world, and then they would often have a thatched roof. This is a demonstration that's given and shown at the Etowa uh, Mounds State Park in Georgia, and you can see it from the inside what it would look like. And then eventually the Cherokees moved into the log cabin style in the uh, 1700s or so, give or take a little bit. And this is what one of these places might look like on the inside. Uh, this is uh, taken from around Fort Loudoun, uh, actually uh, Sequoia's birthplace, which is not too far from Fort Loudoun in Tennessee. And here you can see sort of a combination of both styles. Uh, on the right hand side is a Waddle and Dobb main structure with a log on top and then next door to it is what would be called a uh, summer uh, structure so that the winds could blow through and uh, keep things from being quite so uh, hot. Uh, often you'd see holes in some of the tops of the uh, buildings uh, so that the heat could dissipate, especially during the uh, very hot times of the year. And this is the uh, pre-Cherokee tra Trail of Tears. Uh, these are some very prosperous homes. And in many places, the Cherokees were the most prosperous people around when they were kicked out of the area for being, quote-unquote, savages. Now, the Cher uh, Cherokees have seven clans. Uh, you can't marry within your own clan. It's uh, against the law or, or the custom for a man and woman of the same clan to marry. Uh, Cherokees didn't really give out their clan information publicly. That was considered uh, inappropriate. It's like talking about uh, your sexual preferences in a, just a general uh, conversation. It's not something that was normally done, but it was the kind of thing that just almost everybody knew what clan you were from, even though it wasn't done publicly. Now, not all tribes are alike. In fact, uh, many tribes have different uh, things. Here's an example from the Navajo. My name is Angelo Baca, and in the traditional way I would introduce myself in Navajo, I would say Angelo Baca Yenishia. I have all sides of my family in that introduction. And this is just a list of some of the Navajo clans. They have tons of them. In a formal introduction for a Navajo, you'd mention the clans of all four of your grandparents. At Cherokees, you would not do that. It was just, just considered inappropriate. So let's talk about Nancy Ward. Uh, her Cherokee name, 
stand, uh, means one who goes about. This is a picture of her. Uh, there's no real good pictures. This is one of the drawings. And what I'm going to show you here is where she uh, was born, where she died in Tennessee, and also uh, about the little village of uh, Tennessee, which is next to where she was born and showed up. About 12 miles down the same road that took you to the Sequoia birthplace is the site, or at least a memorial, for the uh, village called Tennessee. Now you notice, Tennessee sounds a whole lot like Tennessee. Well, that's where Tennessee came from, according to the folks that uh, know such stuff. And, uh, by the way, uh, when I said it's 12 miles down from the Sequoia Museum, uh, incidentally, if you are a Cherokee citizen, you get in free to the museum. I'll show you this uh, monument here. It says, uh, Tennessee, capital of the Cherokee Nation, 1721 to 1730, origin of the name for the state of Tennessee. It says, the site of the former town of Tennessee, now underwater, is located about 30 yards west of this marker. Tennessee, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, attained political prominence in 1721 when its civil chief was elected the first emperor of the Cherokee Nation. <clears throat> about the same time, the town name was uh, also applied to the river of which it is located. During the mid-18th century, Tennessee became overshadowed and eventually absorbed by the adjacent town of Choda, which was to the immediate north. The first recorded spelling of Tennessee as it is today occurred on uh, it, or Lieutenant uh, Henry Timberlake's map of 1762. In 1796, the name Tennessee was selected from among several as the most appropriate for the nation's uh, 16th state, therefore symbolized by this monument. Those who reside in this beautiful state are forever linked to this Cherokee heritage. It is pretty. Very nice. And this is Tennessee. Now, just down the road is Choda. And this is the video I took. Unfortunately, when I plugged in my, uh, what, what do you call, selfie stick, I didn't realize plugging it in turned off the sound. So you'll see me uh, talking here with my lips moving, but that's obviously no audio. Nancy Ward was born here in Chota. She uh, lived from 1738 to about 1822. And she achieved her beloved woman status because of several things that happened. Uh, initially in a battle, uh, she, her and her husband, she was helping him by reloading his rifle. He was shot, so she uh, took up his rifle and started shooting herself and helped to uh, lead the uh, Cherokees to victory. And this is the scene of the village where that she grew up. A lot of other uh, famous uh, Cherokees uh, lived here as well and uh, it was the biggest town and actually was the de facto capital during that time well Nancy Ward also became a uh, as a beloved woman she became in charge of uh, captives and uh, she often spoke out in favor of uh, peaceful relationships with European Americans in the area and became uh, very dear to the European Americans as well. Uh, some people say there was only one beloved woman. Uh, that's, that's not quite true. There have been several beloved women back in that era. The Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians uh, to this day still has uh, beloved women. But this is uh, where she grew up, and uh, she often uh, uh, is credited with bringing in dairy products to the Cherokee Nation as well. One of the women that she uh, saved uh, after a raid, uh, white women, uh, she had some cattle, and this woman uh, sh showed her how to use uh, dairy products, and so she introduced that to Cherokee society as well. Now, here's a picture from where she is buried. Travels with Phil continues to the gravesite of Nancy Ward. This is located just south of Benton, Tennessee. You're looking at three graves here. One of them is for Five Killer, the other one is for Longfellow, and then directly in front of you here is the one for Nancy Ward. Now if you can read the plaque here, well if you can't read the plaque, I'll read it for you. It says, in memory of Nancy Ward, princess and prophetess of the Cherokee Nation, the Pocahontas of Tennessee, the constant friend of the American pioneer born 1788 died 1822 and that's from the uh, daughters of the american revolution move around here a little bit so you can uh, see the side of the uh, grave site it's a very peaceful area out here lots and lots of birds at least there are here on uh, may 16th see a couple of uh, uh live things that have been left on the grave itself some corn looks like some flowers have been left up here and there's a tree growing right from the foot of the gravesite. A couple of flagpoles, a uh, seven-pointed star off to the side. It's up on a hill just off the side of the road here. And you can hear a lot of the birds there in the background. So a lot of effort's been put into uh, this site. Not too 
sure about the princess part, but uh, she was definitely a beloved woman among the Cherokees. So again, the gravesite of Nancy Ward, just south of Benton, Tennessee. And one thing about the Cherokees, they're a matrilineal uh, society, so women held many important points. She was at a uh, conference once with some European Americans, and they were sort of upset that they had a woman representing, uh, uh, partially representing the Cherokees. <laughs> she explained to them she was sort of surprised that the European Americans didn't have women with their negotiators. So this is the story of Nancy Ward, a beloved Cherokee woman who lived in the 17-1800s in North Carolina and Tennessee.